I want to talk about something that's just so prevalent to our time right now and always really has been, um, and it is confidence. How do we put confidence or how do we find something in our life that anchors us? Even during this all this time of uncertainty, whether it's economic or health or, or whatever these the uncertainties are, how do we put our hope in something uh, firmly? Now, I've come to 1 Peter 1.13 in a series of studies that I've been doing verse by verse. But as I came to 1.13, I was just really, really struck by the, these little words, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you when at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to just talk really briefly about how do we do that. Not only is it important that we do that, but sometimes we don't always know how to do it. Thankfully, Peter, I think, explains it a little bit to us in the first portion of verse 13. He starts the verse, he says this, Therefore, so which ties it to the passage before, remember Peter is preparing people to live in the context of uh, a society that may not think the way that we do. They may be actually antagonistic towards Christian values and Christian ways of thinking, Christian morality, all these things, but, but Peter is urging uh, these Christians to think differently about their life, think uh, purposefully about their life, that God has chosen them to live in that situation and at just this right time. And I think God has done that for us too, church. He has called us to live during this time, during this pandemic, for a specific reason, and it's for His glory. And I think it is to put on display His glory and His grace at this time. But how do we do that? And so, he, he starts the verse, he says, therefore, if we're going to live differently, we have to prepare our minds for action. Now, a proper translation, maybe my translation would be, pull up your pants. Because the, <laughs> the phrase there is actually, gird up the loins of your mind. Back in the Bible days, they had long robes, and if they were going to run anywhere or, or uh, go into battle or something, they would pull up the cloth from between their legs and around their legs, and they'd pull it up around their waist and tuck it into, you guessed it, the belt. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, put on the belt of truth. I'm going to tell you as Christians, and this goes for young and old. I don't care who you are. I know the old people say, ah, pull up your pants, you young whippersnappers. Well, the young people's pants are getting tighter and tighter, and the old people's pants are falling down more and more. All of us got to pull up our pants a little bit here. And pulling up the pants and girding it, it means to tuck in all this excess material into the belt of truth. We have so much information today, it is tripping us up all over the place. We cannot settle any of it. And we have no context to, to contain any of it except for in truth. Get to know your Bibles. Pull your pants up a little bit and get to know the truth. Well, what is the truth? Let's start with the gospel, please. Instead of being so worried about getting all the right information from the scientist, why don't we get to know what the gospel means? The gospel is that the creator of this world uh, creates man. Man turns in rebellion against God. And yet God puts into plan from the very beginning a plan of redemption to save mankind. Even in the midst of all of a rebellion and so at just the right time, he is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, born as a virgin who suffered and died on our behalf, a substitutionary death to atone for and pay for our sins so that we can be free not just of the penalty for sin, but the power of sin, which condemns us and sends us to, to hell and also has brought the curse into this world. I started off with the beginning of uh, the gospel message is that God is the creator of this world. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know that? We have just little evidences of that. And have you focused on the fact that God has created your body even to fight off these things? And I'm not saying that you won't get sick and we don't get sick, but God's also made it possible for things like vaccines to work. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever given God glory for that? Or are you so worried about what a vaccine might be or if I'm going to have to get a chip to get it? Let's focus on the truth here come back to who is it that is in charge of this he is the creator of this world he has set in motion a plan of redemption thousands of years before it came into being don't you think he's in control of this one year that we're in right now 
So let's go back to the truth. Pull up your pants and tuck the things that you're hearing and listening to into the belt of truth, into what the gospel says about all of these different things. And I promise you, you will worry less and your hope will be much more secure when you put it in the person of Jesus Christ and not in a government official or a scientist or a possible vaccine or a chip in your hand or what Bill Gates is doing. It won't matter nearly as much as whether or not you've put your trust in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, the second part is like this. There's an and there. And being sober-minded. So, not only do we need to pull our pants up, we need to stop being drunk. I think, honestly, some of this information is intoxicating because it's interesting, it's intriguing. There is mystery, there is unknown, and it's exciting. And we think if we can only master understanding what's going to happen in the future and how this fits all, all this fits in and who's being corrupt and what conspiracy is true, then somehow we'll be able to get it. You've got drunk on that. Let's be honest. We, we've lost our minds. And so it says, be sober-minded. A person who is drunk will do a couple, couple things that are really annoying. They will come and slobber up next to you. I love you, man. Yeah. And they don't even know you. We, we do this. We buy into things without even knowing. We've lost all of our inhibitions. And it, and it frees us up to speak whatever we want to speak. People have lost their minds and just spoken. We've become hurtful. We've wronged uh, other brothers. And, and it's time to stop. It's time to be sober-minded, keeping your thoughts and your wits about you, being wise with what you say. And in that soberness, there's also an unwillingness to just speak without thinking, to become violent for no reason. You ever seen a drunk person like that? Now, we do this as Christians, and I think God has called us to be Christians to be this at this time. A voice of reason, a voice of calm, a voice of collectedness, a voice of um, understanding, and also mercy. Dear Christians, wake up to this. God has called us to be merciful and loving as He is. He is changing us to be conformed into the image of His Son. Now, there was times when Jesus was harsh and He confronted sin. But there was many times when he was merciful with people that did not deserve mercy. So let's be honest here. Um, we need to sometimes be thinking about other people's interests more than our own. Do you need to go back to work? Yeah, so do millions of other people. But maybe there's other people that cannot go back to work. And maybe you don't have to worry about money, but maybe somebody else does. And so how you speak in your own context, you also have to remember that there's other contexts who may be different than yours. Maybe people don't have the gospel either. Maybe they don't have the same confidence you have. Why don't we try to give them the gospel instead of pseudoscience that nobody actually has any confidence in anyway? So Christian, we got to wake up and be a little bit sober-minded here. Lastly, the verse ends in this way. Uh, setting your hope fully on the grace of God, which is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Is this future? Yes, it's resurrection. But I think um, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 talk about the righteousness of God being revealed in the gospel. It's the power of the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ, a righteousness that according to verse 17 is by faith. We receive it by faith and we live it by faith. And so it is a day-to-day -day revelation of the goodness and the greatness of Jesus Christ to be sufficient in all the areas where we are in need and in want. He is a great provider. He is rest for the weary. He is the forgiver of sins. He is the friend to the lonely and the one who calms uh, anxiousness and worry. I am with you, he tells us. And so it is uh, this understanding that he walks with us. He has given us a spirit to live out in the spirit's power, things like self-control and love and mercy. So Christians, pull up your pants, sober up, and wake up. Set your minds to action is a call to action, preparedness, and readiness. God has called us to live in this time. Let's be proactive about this. Pull up your pants.